Today's Atlas preview video is the most anticipated one yet. We will be taking a look at one of the single most important aspects of this game, the ships. We will take a look at how you get started and end up on your very first boat. What types of ships will be available to build? How the AI NPC crewing system will work? There is something called a captaining system that allows you to control even the most elaborate massive ships of war. We will look into that. We will also address how capturing someone else's ship works and adding it to your armada. Finally, we will look into shipbuilding and dry docks. I wanted to take a moment and thank everyone off the start for all the support. These videos have been doing fantastic and you have all clearly been enjoying them. I hope you will continue to check out the channel when the game comes out because I am very, very excited for it, if you can't tell. All right, so let's get started, guys. How do you get started in the world of Atlas and build your very own ship? Well, we know that players will start in free ports. These are cities, and they will occupy the largest islands. We believe, at this point, that there will be at least three of them to start, and they will function as safe zones, level-capped starting areas, so new players will not get attacked and dominated. We can do another video on free ports and what we expect to find there, but in the context of ships, this is where players will build their first vessel and set off exploring. I can imagine day one seeing players dispersing from these zones on little single sail rafts and humble rowboat dinghies by the thousands. It's going to be an incredible sight to take in. Now let's talk about the varieties of ships that are available. I've already mentioned rafts and dinghies, but to really get around this massive game world, you are going to need a sailing ship. After setting out from a free port, you will establish yourself on a nearby island, and like Ark Survival Evolved, you're going to chop trees, break rocks, gather resources in order to construct a dry dock, and there you will be able to build a hauled ship. We'll get more into ship building later in the video, but right now let's talk about what types of ships there will be. So far we have had four names for ships given to us. We know there will be sloops, schooners, brigs, and galleons. Traditionally, in history, these ships are categorized by the number of masts they have and how their sails are rigged, but all of that stuff is going to be customizable in Atlas. You will choose how many masts and which type of sails to run on your boat. So with that in mind, I believe that the ships will be classified by the size and shape of their hulls. We're going to go ahead and check out an image here, and in it I count six unique hull types. It's kind of hard to tell, so I totally admit that I could be wrong. But let's go through the six ships I think I see, and the names I think they will have. Now this part is very important. I don't know which one is which, but I will give them to you in the order of size that I think they will come up in. The tiniest ship here, I believe, will be a cog. We haven't heard that ship name yet, but it's probably the most accurate term to describe this tiny little fella. It is very small compared to every other ship. Number two, these are a bit bigger. If I had to guess, these are the sloops, and you can see they have very different sail setups between these two, even though they have totally identical hulls. Number three, a schooner is bigger than a sloop, so we're gonna go ahead and call this one the schooner. All right, number four. I don't know what to name this. This could totally be a brig. It could also be a schooner, but I'm gonna guess that this is a frigate. That is a ship that has a variety of sizes throughout history and would probably fit in between a schooner and a brigantine in terms of size. Number five. This is my guess for the brigantine. It is a powerful, well-rounded ship, large enough to take on a galleon, fast enough to take on a sloop or a schooner. Uh, this is a really versatile ship if you look back in history, and I bet this is going to become the most common ship on the Atlas Oceans for strong companies. Number six. This is undoubtedly the galleon. Now, very few ships in history actually had six masts, and every version of the galleon we see has six, which will make historians among you cringe. But this one seems to have the potential for the most masts and sails. And according to the PC Gamer article, this will take thousands of hours to achieve and will be the giga of the seas. This will have dozens of cannons and a massive deck. 
Combat is going to be a major part of the PvP version of the game. We know that companies of players can conquer territory, assemble forts, plunder settlements, and build armadas. And in PvP, companies are going to do battle against each other on land to vie for territory. But because the map is full of islands, these land battles will have to begin with one side at sea, and I think most battles will likely include elements from each side fighting on land while other elements fight at sea. Imagine yourself on an island and an enemy armada approaches. You aren't just going to defend yourself. You're going to launch your ships and take them on at sea as well as on land. Galleons will bombard the fortresses and the defenders will attempt to sink them before their crews can come ashore with artillery using horses, bears, bulls, and even elephants to pull those cannons into place. Naval battles will be just as important as fighting on land and I expect ships to blast each other with cannons at sea until one becomes disabled or slows down so massively that it can be boarded. At that point there will be ship to ship fighting and the aggressor will board the weakened enemy vessel. More on this in a minute. The third topic I wanted to cover is AI crew. You will not have to go it alone. Even solo players will be able to recruit NPCs to help crew their ships. These can be recruited in free ports, stolen from other players, or recovered from the ghost ships crewed by the Army of the Damned. The NPCs aren't going to be shipbound either. They'll be able to follow you onto land, riding mounts, manning cannons, puckle guns, and mortars. And aboard your ship, they can be given responsibilities, like uh, manning the weapons, repairing holes in the ship, and they can be commanded to defend against borders or to board enemy ships. Uh, this is a crazy ambitious system, and I think we'll talk more about it in the next section. The fourth topic we're gonna cover is how does captaining work? One of the most interesting revelations from that recent PC Gamer article is that players will be able to single-handedly command even the largest ships of war using what they call a captaining system, or you'll be able to command as a crew with lieutenant podiums. Naval battles will include ships full of AI crews to man the unique weapon stations and to patch holes in sinking vessels, and as your AI crew gains experience, they can level up both their stats and their gear, all the while the ship itself will be leveling up. The NPCs on your crew will need food and gold to avoid a mutiny. Patching holes in your ship will require a repair hammer tool, and then a sort of minigame will initiate, and it should be really basic. It was described in the PC Gamer article like a golf swing from an old Nintendo golf game, where you basically start a cursor bouncing back and forth, and then you click again to stop it in the right place. So this is going to be really interesting, and you're going to be using metal as a resource in order to make these repairs. Ships will take on water if no one gets to the repairs, and we now also know that ships can catch fire, and there will be buckets in the game. Those can be used to put out fire, to bail out sinking rowboats, or to transfer liquids from one container to another. They can contain either salt water or fresh water. Cannons will be the main weapon in naval battles, but it sounds like ramming will also be a thing. If you get the opportunity to get a headlong charge into the broadside of your enemy, you will be able to do serious damage to their ship. However, you'll be putting your ship at risk at the same time. Let's get more into the captaining system, guys, because it is very cool. When you take the helm of your ship, also known as the captain's wheel, you will then get a bird's eye view of the ship. Steering it is going to involve two, two simultaneous adjustments. You will be turning the rudder and simultaneously rotating the sails in order to catch the wind and gain the broadside of your enemy. You're going to use A and D on your keyboard to turn the rudder, and if you hold shift while you're pressing A or D, you're going to turn the sails. This is going to take some learning and some getting used to, and the people who learn it fast and get good at it fast are going to be so dangerous. This is speculation, but I think the different types of ships are going to handle based partially on their hull type and partially on the type of sails they have rigged. While you have a bird's eye view of your ship from the captain's wheel, there is going to be a HUD on the screen. I think this will indicate damage to your ship, but most importantly, it is going to indicate the speed and the direction of the wind. If you turn too fast and you lose the wind in your sails, you will lose your ship's momentum and you will become much less maneuverable. Very cool that ships can be commanded solo, but of course you can also do it with your friends. There will be stations called lieutenant's podiums, and from there you'll be able to delegate tasks so that the second and third in command on your ship will be able to handle the weapon systems, sails, uh, stations like repairs. Think about it like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, but with pirates. If you manage to sink an enemy vessel and it becomes an underwater wreck, you're going to be able to free dive or use the primitive scuba system in order to pillage it for loot, all while avoiding hammerhead sharks. 
This is really important. People are asking how capturing a ship will work. And I was on Reddit today, and I saw lots of conversations about how ship ownership will work. People talked about, oh, it'll be like ARC. There'll be the person in, in charge of your company will determine permissions and who's able to use what. I wanted to remind you guys, this is a pirate game. If you can get your hands on something, it's yours. So as the leader of your company, you're not going to be able to say, this guy can't use this ship. If you have someone in your crew and they decide to take your ship off at 1 a.m. and go sail to another group, that ship is gone. You will no longer have it. Everything is up for grabs in Atlas. Keep that in mind. So when it comes to capturing an enemy ship, captains will be able to instruct their AI crew members to board enemy ships and capture them. So if you don't sink the enemy, you can seize their ship. The ship-to-ship -ship player combat is going to be epic. We know you can swing onto the enemy ships using ropes and grappling hooks, and then you'll begin hand-to-hand -hand combat using swords, pistols, muskets, all of the above. Claiming an enemy vessel will involve first killing the enemy AI in a boarding action, and then getting below decks to destroy beds. If you destroy beds, you'll prevent the human captain and lieutenants from respawning. The higher a ship's level, the more beds it will be able to have. So a beginning ship won't be able to spam beds, they will be limited to a certain number. If you kill the players uh, on a ship, they will respawn at those beds, but like Ark, they will have none of their gear. So when you want to capture an enemy ship, you will need to first kill everybody and then get down to the hull, get into the belly of the ship and destroy the beds that are down there. Capturing a ship will let you take it and add it to your armada, of course, until somebody takes it from you. Now these transfers of ownership and the great victories won by a ship will be tracked in a permanent logbook, which will allow each ship to preserve a detailed history. Your ships will gain experience and level up just like you and your crew. And topic number six, guys, how is shipbuilding going to work? This is something everyone wants to know about, but I sadly know very little about it. This is from the Steam description, guys. It says, build dry docks and start with a dinghy rowboat, basic raft, tiny sloop, or nimble schooner, moving on up to your own versatile brigantine or titanic galleon, capable of transporting hundreds of crew and extensive cargo. That's where I got the names of the ship we know so far. Now, you will also be able to name your ship in big bold letters, paint and copy your own pirate flags, and custom place all the pieces of your ship. Which sails and where, planks and gun ports, every single structure piece will have a physical weight and material. So if you load a ship with way too many cannons, it's going to be heavy and less maneuverable. How cool is that? We know that any ship larger than a raft is going to be constructed in dry docks, which you are going to have to build before you can begin working on the ship. The Steam description tells us that we can build the ship of our dreams plank by plank, but I believe you're going to begin with a basic hull design, starting with a small cog or sloop, and working your way up to a massive galleon. Now I believe that these will be unlocked like engrams in ARC or found like blueprints. So in that sense, low-level players will not have what they need to start building a galleon on the first day. You're going to have to level up and get to it like you would have to get to, say, a Giga Saddle in ARC. We have one time lapse of shipbuilding, and that shows that the hull is being framed out, the deck is being built, decorations are being added, and then masts are being installed. I think that the smallest ship will just have one snap point for a mast, and will only be able to have smaller masts and sails, but bigger ships will have more snap points for two, three, four, five, and even six masts. Now I mentioned this earlier, but six masted ships in history are almost non-existent, and I've seen lots of comments from people cringing at the galleons with six square rigged sails on them. It is a little silly, but if the number of sails determines the top speed a ship can achieve, I fully expect to see the maximum number of masts on every ship in PvP. There are clearly several different types of sails, from square-rigged galleons to latine-rigged schooners, and we know that sails can fly at half-mast to limit speed, and I am speculating here, but I imagine that the different types of sails will confer different benefits to your ship, like a higher top speed or more maneuverability. We know that the ships are highly customizable. They can be built on, and the below decks areas can be specialized to suit your needs. Design them with roomy cargo holds or with well-protected rooms for your beds and your gear. That, my friends, is everything we know about ships. Don't ask about airships. They're not in the game yet. A couple of questions for you to answer in the comments below if you feel like engaging. First, how do you think shipbuilding is going to work and what sort of customization are you hoping for? 
and what sort of ship do you want? Are you going to be happy exploring in a nimble little sloop, or do you want to broadside your enemies with the 25 cannons on the side of the galleon? Anything you want to talk about in the comments, guys, go ahead and do it. I will be down there. And I mentioned this off the start. I'm very grateful for the support on these videos so far. They seem to be helping people pass the time while we wait for this game to be released. And I've had the benefit of being one of the only people doing in-depth coverage on Atlas so far. Your Syntax, your Slip Gators, your King Daddy D-Max haven't hit this game too hard yet. But in a couple of days they will be, and I'm sure you'll be encouraged to go back and watch them, but I hope you'll consider coming with me on my adventures. Follow Captain Gingerbeard as he explores the high seas. I have a couple of series planned. First, I will be diving into PvE, seeing what the game is like for a solo player. I plan on doing an exploration series, hitting the discovery zones and following whatever quest line exists, seeing how many islands are out there and exploring this world. I will also be playing some PvP. I have a big Patreon community, and we will be working together to build a colony and survive against the big, powerful clans that will dominate the PvP versions of Atlas. I'm excited, guys, and I hope you will join me for these upcoming series, videos, live streams, let's plays. I got a lot of stuff planned, and I can't wait to keep sharing this with you. If you can't tell, I'm really enthusiastic about this game, and it's becoming quite infectious. A lot of you are getting equally excited about this and are telling me I'm the reason why. So if you're into Atlas, I am happy to have been here to entertain you these last many days, and I will be here for the days to come as we play and explore the world of Atlas.